Hey guys, um, just thought I'd do a follow up video um, from the BMS issues that I uh, had um, sort of well, over the past few weeks and months. Um, and now we know what the issue is, I'm working on that. I have tried the twisted wires, um, that has not solved the issues. Um, so I'm going to try shorter cables. Um, failing that, I'm going to then try maybe a Cat 6A cable um, and splicing that into smaller chunks and putting some connectors on the end um, as those have twisted pairs in already and they are shielded um, on the pair level and the whole cable level if I remember correctly. So that's going to be an ongoing process um, but I will report once I get that fully fixed. Um, but what I have done for now, since I know what that issue is and it's kind of reinvigorated us and got us interest in the project again, um, I've been looking at the features of the DIY BMS, um, specifically the controller software. So this is the main screen. Um, you will notice that there's one additional button now um, on this screen when we have cancel average balance. I used to occasionally use average balance and it was good for testing and you could kick that off. You did that and then um, it would do the average, find which ones were above the average and then put those into bypass mode. And that's still great for using every now and then if you've got a pack and you need to do a manual balance. But sometimes it was just for testing and you would kick it off and then the only way to clear it is either to reset the modules or the easier way was to reset the, um, the ESP. Um, the Wii must got a reset switch on side, it's not the end of the world. But if you're doing it remotely, it's nice to be able to start it and then stop it. Um, and then I've made some changes in the module screen. This ties in with the average balance. Um, and one of the issues is, again, remotely, it was very difficult to gauge if a cell was in bypass or not. Um, so if I start an average balance and then I go back into modules, um, hopefully, um, yeah, there's a few cells that are ever so slightly out of balance there. What it'll do is it'll um, start that average balance. Some of the packs are going to bypass, and there you go. You can see pack 26 and 28 are in bypass mode. So it'll just stick a one there. And that's just to have a look on your modules page, and you see at a glance which ones are in bypass, and you know, makes life a lot easier. So if I come out of here and then do a cancel average balance. You will notice, such as yeah, I'm getting the, the odd erroneous reading. Um, that's, I think, mainly down to the interference issue I'm having. Maybe now I know the inverter's not switched on, so they're not in panic mode. But I've been getting this every now and then, so most likely that is down to interference. We'll find that out once I do the measures that I mentioned early on to try and eliminate that completely. So if we go back here, you can see the bypass status is cleared for all of those. Um, as I'm back in my core as well now, the, the temperature's shown in Celsius, um, which for me just makes it a, a little bit easier to read. You could sort of use that as a gauge sometimes with the temperature, because um, the board would heat up, um, which would, you know, heat the thermistor up a little bit, but uh, there was no way a concrete uh, gauge on, on that. Um, I have left mine pointing towards the pack. I know I've got the same issue as what Adam Welch had when he was doing his pack, in that the um, bead on the head of the thermistor doesn't fit through the gap in the cells. But what I've done is I've just kind of left it there, um, so it's going to press up against the cells on the side. It would be nice if it poked through into the middle of the pack, but in all honesty, you're only going to measure part of the pack at any one time anyway. Um, so that's not really um, going to be useful in, um, in a sense. So um, it gives you a rough idea. So that's why I've left it there. Um, the other thing which I have um, modified is I've enabled some balancing settings and auto balancing. Um, and basically what this is going to do is the auto balancing that you can kick off in the average balance. It's using the same function so it does an average and then it's going to check if it's above that average and um, if a module is it'll enable a bypass for a while and burn it for a certain amount of time and then it's going to come back and then you can see where it's at um, but what it's going to keep doing is it, the timer runs every 60 seconds the same as the it's the same timer that runs to post to either influx um, or emon cms um, so what that's going to do is 
just run that check but it only runs that check if you've got the auto balance enabled um, and then what you can also do as well if you only wish to balance your pack when it's above a certain voltage so you can do like kind of a, a top balancing almost um, you could say stick that to 4 volts um, and then you can save that and then but this will not take effect until you enable the auto balancing I'll say not take effect there's nothing to actually to, to, to run there but um, the idea is that you don't want the auto balancing perpetually kicking in um, sort of tweaking the cells, burn, enable that bypass and burning some of the load and then you're just going to slowly run your pack down uh, as a whole so what it'll do is if you've got it like this it'll um, only ba balance it when it's above 4 volts um, and you, but you will notice another setting here which is the max allowed cell voltage now I've put this in because largely it would be controlled by a charge controller um, but this is a kind of tiny little nice ad, sort of slight safety feature in that if your pack your cell sorry individual cell gets above the maximum allowed cell voltage um, it'll put that in a bypass mode what this will do is no matter if you've got auto balance enabled um, and no matter what voltage you've got to set here this will take priority and you don't need the auto balancing enabled for this it's more of a um, safety feature so maybe this shouldn't be in the balancing settings but um, but the idea is that that will override um, and that will then just stick those individual cells so if any one of these say cell 1 was in 4.2 it would then enable burn mode <laughs> that's good timing it's not actually that high because it's reading 65 volts but um, once it goes above that threshold that you've set it'll just enable um, the bypass on that but what it can do is it'll still step through all the other cells individually and if any of those are in um, over the threshold it'll enable a bypass on those and then what it will do is it'll not bother trying to auto balance whether it's enabled or, um, yeah whether it's enabled it'll just ignore that and it'll try and get those cells down to the I'd say safe level but it's the level that you've set because technically you could set that quite a lot lower um, so yeah so I think those things combined should make it a lot more useful especially if you put this to a reasonable voltage so um, with mine I had it set at um, 3.8 I had that enabled um, these are saved um, to the EEPROM so they will persist through reboots as well so it's just something to be aware of if you've enabled auto balance and if you reboot the ESP um, or you re-upload a sketch but you're only doing sketch only when you when you do that um, those will persist so it'll automatically start auto balancing again um, but it's kind of nice that you've got the best of both worlds you either do an auto balance or you can manually kick off the balance um, and then you can stop that manual balance um, so it's nice to be able to have those different combinations um, and that's largely it what I am gonna do is tweak the um, the average balancing because at the moment what it, it's doing it to three decimal places um, which is crazy for it to try and get it that accurate um, a lot of the times when I've seen it working on the pack it's been able to get it to um, two decimal places um, fairly reasonably um, it's maybe not as much of an issue on a big pack but on a small pack it's gonna continually keep tweaking those and then the issue is when it turns the bypass on it causes a tiny little bit of sag on the pack um, if it's a small very small pack um, that was especially evident when I was doing that on the, the test setup which was um, individual 18650s um, so you're always going to have these little variances from things like a sag or just the variance of reading it as well um, it's going to be a little bit skittish jump around ever so slightly um, especially at that detail so to do it at small places will probably be easier um, if anyone's got any suggestions on that by all means um, put some in the comments below that'd be great um, I'll put a link to the github where this is and you can get the latest download there's a couple of people um, testing it um, that I spoke to and it seems to be working okay for them um, and keeping things nicely in balance so any feedback would be brilliant be much appreciated um, I'll come back with another video following on with the the pack and the wiring and how I go on that but I didn't want to hold off doing this video just just for that so um, oh one thing before I go guys um, is I've made some small changes to the Grafana side of things 
Um, and to be honest, this is where I'm probably going to do most of the monitoring. But I have just kind of um, done some the, the other web interface stuff just for at a glance checking if there's any issues with Grafana. But what I've done here is I've enabled the, the bypass status, which actually works now. Um, and that's been working pretty well. The only issue I'd say with this is that it's more, how did someone term it, it for trending rather than real time view. This could be 60 seconds out of date. So what can happen is that a cell could go into bypass and then out of bypass in that 60 second window and it wouldn't actually be recorded. But it's that toss up between how current does it need to be and clogging up the database by trying to log every 10 seconds or something ridiculous. So I, I've set this at one minute. I, you could load down 30 seconds in the code. By all means do that. Um, the refresh only goes down to every one minute if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, you can do a manual refresh. Um, but yeah, that's just a bit, bit of a pain I'd say. Um, so, but there you go. So it's captured two there. Um, so it, it does capture, it does work. Um, and especially if it's doing a long balance, you will be able to drop me in. Um, and you just know the system's working. It's up to burning some uh, some voltage off. So there we go, that's cell three and cell five it was working on. And you can see those are two of the higher cells. Um, and it'll just cycle through. So just a little added nicety. Um, I'm still working on the Grafana side of trying to make it look pretty. I'd love it if I could have, instead of having these, um, things where it lights up and doing it in a table. I'd love it if it would just change the color of this bar chart. I've been struggling how to do that. So if anyone's got any suggestions, that'd be fantastic. Um, and anything else really in Grafana, I fully admit it's not my forte, but I'm trying to pull something thing together. So yeah guys, so feel free to like, subscribe and um, thanks.